Uh, my name is Brandon Robinson. I am CEO and co-founder of Horizon Aircraft. Uh, we're pretty unique in this new advanced air mobility space. We're building a hybrid electric vertical takeoff and landing aircraft. So think three to 500 miles range, carrying 1,500 pounds of useful load. That speeds up to 250 knots. So more of a regional machine going between cities uh, than the typical air taxi, which you might think of just going from you know skyscraper to skyscraper. Uh, before I decided to found Horizon Aircraft, I was actually a fighter pilot in the Air Force. So I flew F-18s for the better part of 20 years. And I think that operational background, when I decided to retire and uh, found this company, has led to a DNA wherein you know Horizon Aircraft is a bunch of operators and pilots first, uh, building a really tough machine that's going to work um, in the real world. Uh, famously, my first flight, when uh, I think when I was six months old, in our family's Republic CB, so an old flying boat, high wing, could land on the water, amphibious, could also um, run up on the land as well. Uh, and my grandfather was a World War II bomber pilot. And so he taught me how to fly. Uh, I was flying since I was about three years old. My father was a pilot. He's been building and flying airplanes since he was about 14 years old as well. Uh, so aviation kind of DNA. Actually, in the summer, it was not uncommon to see, you know, the CB parked, uh, you know, on our dock. And then three other float planes tied up to uh, various structures uh, as my uncles and cousins all had airplanes yeah, as well. So the origin story of Horizon Aircraft is pretty unique. So near the end of my Air Force career, my father was running an aerospace business uh, and he was increasingly interested in electrification. So electric flaps, electric landing gear, uh, did a lot of modifications for folks in the general aviation space. He was approached by some investors who were very interested in this new electric vertical takeoff and landing space uh, and wanted a concept put together. So the first thing we did was take a look at it, again, from a very operational and pilot centric perspective. Uh, does this even make sense to build one of these machines? Uh, the answer overwhelmingly was yes, uh, if it had a number of specifications. So it had to travel you know, between three and 500 miles, it had to go at reasonable operational speeds, it had to be able to carry a useful load of at least 1,000 pounds. Uh, and we saw, not only that, we saw an emerging market gap in that space. So at that same time, there was a lot of people interested uh, in all electric aircraft. When we did the math on that, uh, we thought, yes, there will be a, you know, especially a niche early market for those machines, um, but they would be limited to very short ranges, 20 or 30 miles, once you factored in all of the cold weather operations and battery degradation and everything, and packaging these new cells in the aerospace grade uh, battery packs. Uh, so we put together a hybrid electric concept that still leveraged an energy source that's no kidding, 20 or 30 times as energy dense as the best batteries, uh, and building a machine that had that operational flexibility and versatility to go a little further and hit that you know, market gap that uh, seemed to be emerging. So again, targeting a regional scale between cities um, and more early use cases such as medevac, critical cargo delivery, organ transport, emergency medical services. Maybe it's uh, transporting some critical goods to a northern remote community that uh, really, really needs it. Um, missions like that that then would build out to kind of transform the way people tr moved around at a regional scale. Yeah, so the aircraft configuration is quite unique. Um, and so in, when we were looking at the problem initially, there was no box in which we were working. Uh, you know, the technology uh, and the different concepts, we, we kind of, you know, cast a very wide net. Um, what we settled on was an aircraft, if we could make it work, uh, that could fly the majority of its mission just like a normal airplane. So natural wingborne flight, you know, there's a reason you don't see seagulls flying around with their wings doing this. Very efficient, en route flight, very fast, uh, was one of our operational goals. And we're willing to take a trade-off in the takeoff and landing phases in order to achieve that. Uh, so the, the configuration is relatively unique. So what the viewers might not see here is an array of lift fans electrically driven in the canards uh, and in the main wings. Okay, the wings are in an open position right now, and that's vertical takeoff and landing mode. So when an aircraft wants to take off vertically, those uh, electric lift fans power up, and they have enough power to lift the airplane up. Now in the full-scale concept, that power comes from two sources an onboard battery array and a hybrid electric system that has a generator on board helping that battery array out. So we're able to carry a lot less batteries. Now when the airplane wants to move forward, it engages the rear pusher prop at the back, accelerates forward to a safe speed above stall speed. Those wings and canards close and completely conceal the fans. Now you're back to a very efficient en route configuration just like a normal aircraft. That's where we get our speed, our range, our operational flexibility from. Now, when you want to land, you just reverse that process at a safe speed. The fans spin up, you slow down, and you can vertically land again on electric power. 
another advantage of a hybrid system is after a takeoff where you've drained battery power, en route during forward flight, we use the generator to recharge the batteries. So when you get to your destination, you're attempting to vertically land with full battery power. If anything should happen at destination where you're attempting a vertical landing, but you have to go around, uh, now you can recharge your battery again and attempt another uh, landing at full battery power. Unlike some of the other all electric machines you know, that have no recharge capability and it is continuously a, a depleting battery situation. Having hybrid electric power on board also is advantageous because it provides a heat source. So we can heat the cabin, uh, our aircraft will, uh, we are targeting flight into known icing and IFR conditions, bad weather operations, cold weather operations. And so having a heat source on board uh, not only can heat up the batteries and keep everything warm, but also heat the, um, any passengers and heat some other systems so that ice does not form. So, uh, very early on, we decided to hybrid offered a number of advantages. So we would need distributed electric uh, propulsion in order to make the concept work. But gas still held you know, between 20 and 30 times as much energy per unit mass as even the best aerospace grade batteries. Uh, so the early iterations of the design were pretty interesting. They were all canard um, aircraft. Uh, however, we tried to simplify the design a little bit more whereby we had louvre systems uh, that, you know, a series of sort of rails that would close off the circular ducts. Um, that offered too much turbulence, was not gonna work. Um, we thought maybe we could just fly around with the wings, uh, wing, wing fans uncovered. Uh, we came up with a number of complex reasons that that did not work as a concept. And then we thought, you know, what, what if we could come up with a concept whereby it was in one configuration, just like modern aircraft with slats and flaps deployed. And then when those slats and flaps came back to the neutral position, it would hide the fan array and completely be as low drag as possible. Um, with, of course, the trade-off that those mechanisms have to be very well designed and have to work all the time. Uh, so we followed a very traditional aircraft prototyping protocol. So we started uh, with concepts, we did the rough math. Uh, we did weave in a lot of operational experience. And so we have a couple of individuals that have designed, built, and flown clean sheet aircraft. And uh, we know that you know the computer can tell you one thing and your math can tell you one thing. Um, but some efficiencies or lack thereof can stack up and, and hurt some of those initial calculations. So we applied a little common sense and a little bit of experience to those initial calculations. Uh, then of course we moved into concept design and we locked down the outer modal line. Uh, we did some computational fluid dynamics uh, confirmations that of course the aer aerodynamics was gonna work out fine, that we'd had enough power on board. Um, and then you just iterate through the detailed portion of it. Now we have to actually fit the engine in and we have to fit the electric motors in and, we have to get all the details uh, correct. Uh, and that was on the full scale concept. So once we got that uh, approximately correct, uh, we started with a subscale prototype, so a smaller version. Uh, and then we you know, tested that very successfully and then built this 50% uh, scale aircraft. Yeah, so we do all the composite manufacturing in-house and all the design in-house. Uh, we do buy our electric motors uh, uh, commercial off the shelf right now for the 50% scale prototype. We're working with a number of really interesting partners for the full scale aircraft already. And we're actually building full scale propulsion unit right now, uh, which is pretty exciting. So starting to build the full scale aircraft uh, as well. Um, so the majority is done in house, the things that make sense, uh, battery packs, uh, power electronics, electric motors, just themselves, we commercial off the shelf and everything else is uh, our own circuit boards, our own programming, everything uh, else is done, like I said, in house. I mean, one of the things you have to decide on early is what size you're gonna build your subscale prototype. Um, we calculated that 50% scale prototype would do a number of things organizationally and also be very useful in informing the full scale design. So it's large enough where the Reynolds numbers and some other metrics um, can be mappable to the full scale aircraft. So flying and flight testing on this subscale aircraft would be useful. We get useful information on the full scale aircraft. That's the litmus test of building the 50% scale prototype. Uh, we also pushed the limits on uh, what we could uh, reasonably purchase commercial off the shelf for this aircraft itself. Uh, and I wanted to challenge the team and, and get the voltages up, get the powers up, build a big enough machine uh, that it would stretch the organization as well and help us grow, get the right um, folks on board that had the right skills. And that's been successful also. So the flight testing on this 50% scale has been quite extensive. So we started in our hangar, tuning the aircraft so it had the right responses in roll, pitch, and yaw. 
Um, then we took it off the special jig we did for that, and we started hover testing, uh, which was exciting and terrifying at the same time. Um, but it settled down really quickly, and then we had an aircraft that was really stable in hover. After that, we took it to a wind tunnel. So the Ace Climatic Wind Tunnel in Canada uh, is a place that normally tests big, large automotive vehicles, uh, but it had a wind tunnel that was big enough for this aircraft. And we were able to strap it to the floor uh, on a sense, specially designed sensor bed and then run it up to full transition speeds and measure the forces in all the, uh, all the different axes and also the control response. Uh, so we put it, took it through multiple control routines. We did multiple uh, panel cycling so from wings closed to wings open. I made sure everything worked and didn't break. Uh, we got a lot of data from that. It was very useful. Yeah, so after wind tunnel testing, we took the aircraft back to our primary location and we did increasingly aggressive hover testing that's tethered. So tethered to the ground, um, we tested in crosswind situations, in higher wind situations, made sure the aircraft could hover in place. Uh, and then we did entered the most exciting phase, which is the transition flight testing. Um, so we took it to an offsite location. Uh, we got a special uh, flight operations certificate from Transport Canada, and we took it off without a tether and started increasing uh, its forward velocities in, in a very calculated way. So first, uh, baby steps, crawl, walk, run, sort of, you know, 10 meters per second, 15 meters per second, uh, creeping our way up to full transition speed, whereby we would close the wings mm -hmm. eventually and return to normal wingborne flight. So the next steps for us are pretty exciting. Uh, we're going to fully transition this 50% scale prototype in its advanced flight test program. Uh, that's going to give us a lot of useful data. And we're also simultaneously in detailed uh, design of the full scale aircraft. And we're starting to produce parts. So the first uh, large scale part is a 32 inch fan that produces 600 pounds of thrust. And we are actually building uh, that full scale propulsion unit right now. Uh, we're going to put it in a test facility, beat it up, make sure that it produces enough thrust, map its thermal properties and its electrical uh, properties. Uh, and that'll be pretty exciting, uh, fully uh, sort of validating the underpinning technology. Uh, and in 24 to 30 months, we'll have a full-scale technical demonstrator uh, ready to go. Uh, yeah, so along the way, Horizon Aircraft has a lot of help from the Canadian ecosystem. So Transport Canada has been absolutely fantastic. Uh, we partnered with a company, CERT Centre Canada, led by John Maris, who's on our board, from a certification perspective, helping out. Uh, that's been absolutely amazing. Uh, the DARE Green Fund, we've been successful in getting some grants. Uh, we've been talking to the INSAT folks and are going to be submitting an application. Uh, right now is an exciting time to be a Canadian company doing a sustainable aviation work. Um, and we're excited that the ecosystem is evolving and there's lots of support, so we thank everyone that has contributed to the airplane.